So in this video, we will be making some desktop speakers. It will be a 3D printed base reflex enclosure with a matched two-way crossover coupled with some data and audio drivers. These speakers deliver some serious punch while being compact enough to fit on your desktop. They have a unique shape that I have not yet seen anywhere else. That is the reason why I'm really excited to share this project with you. In the first step, I define the basic dimensions of my speaker build. The size of the speaker is limited by the build volume of my 3D printer, as I did not want to separate the speaker in too many individual parts. I therefore settled on a height of around 215 millimeters and a width of 155 millimeters. This was enough space to fit a 4 inch mid base woofer and a 1 inch tweeter. Through various research on the internet, I ended up selecting the Dayton Audio TCP115 and the ND25FA soft dome tweeter. With the speaker component selected, I used the data files provided by Dayton Audio to simulate the crossover from the mid base woofer to the tweeter in a program called Exim. I chose a second order crossover circuit which is based on a capacitor inductor pair. Each driver has their own unique sound profile, so it is important to match the crossover frequency as much as possible to get a smooth transition between the two drivers. With some additional resistors, I further corrected for equal loudness between the drivers. As a result, I got a simulated frequency response curve, which is flat within plus minus 3 dB. The speaker enclosure I designed in Fusion 360. Starting out, I only had a rough idea of the baffle shape, which I tried to extend in an organic way to complete the speaker. Because I'm using a 3D printer to create the enclosure, I avoided planar surfaces as much as possible. The result is a tapered shape slowly merging into the rear part of the base reflex. The unique design of the speaker really helps it stand out and I'm really happy with the overall aesthetics. With a program called WinISD, I could also calculate an appropriate port diameter and length to optimize the base output at low frequencies. So after all of the designing and printing, this is what we get out of the printer. Uh, the speaker can be separated into three parts. This is obviously the main part and this will contain both of the drivers and it's also open um, at the rear. I printed it in this orientation and it can be printed without any supports. The rear end of the speaker and then also the, the port or the vent because I designed this enclosure as a base reflex system because of currently I'm not planning to use a separate subwoofer so with that I at least get a little bit of space. Before we can actually move on to insert all of the parts I would like to touch up the surface. So I'm going to be using some different sanding paper um, from very low grit to high grit and this will then prepare the surface so that we can then uh, paint it more easily later on. This enclosure was printed on a 0.8 millimeter nozzle which is double the diameter of the default nozzle. Therefore the grooves created through the printing process were quite noticeable and it took a lot of sanding filling and sanding again to get a sufficiently smooth surface for the paint job. To have a clean look on the baffle, I decided to smooth that as much as possible. However, for the rest of the body, I left just enough roughness so the pattern is still visible 
and this gives the speaker enclosure its own unique appearance. The space in the speaker enclosure did not allow for one PCB board to fit all the components. I therefore decided to separate the high pass filter and the low pass filter into two separate parts. For the high pass filter, I am using a 2.2 ohm 16 watt resistor. A Dayton Audio 4.7 microfarad audio grade capacitor and an 18 gauge 1 millihenry inductor. All these components will be soldered to a PCB board. On the bottom of the PCB board, I glued on some standoffs which match the shape of the speaker for a better bonding of the glue. The high pass filter uses similar components as the low pass filter. A 3.3 microfarad capacitor, a 6.8 ohm 16 watt resistor, and a 0.13 millihenry inductor. All to be soldered to a custom sized PCB board with pre drilled holes and glued on standoffs. Before soldering, all the components were fastened with cable ties. I double checked multiple times if the layout matched the electrical diagram for the high pass filter. To complete the soldering process, I also attached the speaker wire for the internal wiring. The input signals are the two cables on the left side, while the speaker output is on the right side. I repeated the same process again for the low pass filter. This time the input is from the right side and the speaker output cable is on the left side. The low and high pass filters will be secured inside of the speaker enclosure with some heavy duty glue which I found at my local hardware store. Once this glue dries it remains rubber like which hopefully will help in the long run with any vibrations from the speaker. Before placing it into the speaker, I had a few dry runs to make sure the PCB board is placed at just the right location. The holes for the speaker terminals are drilled after the print. Therefore, their location is flexible. I placed them at the rear bottom of the speaker as this seemed to be the place with the most subtle appearance. The plus and minus signal are then soldered to the high and low pass filter. The rear section of the speaker is both glued and fastened via screws. The glue I am using is just regular wood glue. The main purpose of the glue is to ensure an airtight seal between the two parts. With four M3 screws, the connection between these two parts is additionally secured. The combined enclosure is sanded down one last time to ensure a smooth transition between the rear and main part. Furthermore, I printed out some placeholders for the driver openings to make sure no paint gets into the inside of the speaker housing. I applied some plastic primer followed by two to three coats of blue spray paint and then a semi-matte finishing top layer. Despite this being my first paint job, I am happy with the result. The blue itself is subtle enough to not stand out but still gives the loudspeaker a nice classy look. For the speaker stand, I designed a simple spike shape stand. I purposely did not paint this to give the speaker a bit more contrast. In the last step, I've applied some non-hardening putty to ensure an airtight seal between the tweeter and the speaker enclosure. The internal speaker wires are soldered directly to the tweeter. At last, the tweeter is carefully fitted into the baffle and tightened with some black M4 screws. 
The oval fit of the tweeter within the baffle is nearly spot on, with a smooth, flush transition between tweeter and the baffle. Finally, the woofer is prepared in the same way as the tweeter and soldered to the internal speaker wires. With that, the speaker build is finished. I have been using these speakers over the last couple of weeks, mainly for music and video content. And no matter what is playing, they have been able to produce a wide sound state with power and clarity. My overall conclusion is of course slightly biased. But I've been positively surprised by the overall outcome and I can only recommend to try and build these speakers for yourself.